Hi everyone, Dr. Gretchen here, physical therapist and multiple sclerosis specialist at The Missing Link. I'm going to teach you a way that you can get neuroplasticity to work faster for you. And better yet, it's scientifically proven. One way that we can promote neuroplasticity is to do cardio exercise before we do our strengthening based exercises. Now, there's some things that we don't know yet about cardio, specifically related to multiple sclerosis. This research is pretty new. So for example, while we do know that getting our heart rate up and getting cardio or aerobic exercise first before strengthening, is helpful in promoting neuroplasticity, we don't know yet exactly how long the cardio or aerobic exercise should be. We don't know the intensity or what type of cardio. We just know that research has found that doing an aerobic exercise that gets your heart rate up before strengthening yielded better results indicating neuroplasticity. Just as a reminder, neuroplasticity is the ability of our brain to either strengthen neural pathways, so strengthen the neural pathway from our brain to any muscle so that the muscle moves, but it's also the ability to find brand new neural pathways. So if you go to lift your leg and it lifts a little bit, but it's heavy and it's hard and it doesn't lift as high as your stronger side, but it is lifting, that means that your neural pathway is there. You have one that's working, it's just weak, it's not strong enough. So neuroplasticity is the ability to strengthen that neural pathway so then the muscle gets stronger. But let's say you go to lift your leg and nothing happens, zero movement. That means that your neural pathway is not working, in which case neuroplasticity is the ability to find a new neural pathway, a new way to get from point A to point B. Point A is your brain, point B is any muscle that you're trying to work on. The way that you get this to work is through repetition with strengthening exercise. We have another video on that that's titled Functional Exercise, but regardless, we need neuroplasticity to work if we want stronger muscles. And one way to get neuroplasticity working is to do cardio exercise first. So what I want to share with you are three of my favorite upper body cardio based exercises. I love doing upper body cardio because if you do lower body cardio like walking or if you're at the gym, you might be thinking of a treadmill, a Stairmaster, elliptical, it's going to fatigue your legs. And if your legs are fatigued, you're not going to have enough energy or strength to then do your strengthening exercises. So I personally love doing upper body cardio. So let's run through my three favorite upper body cardio movements, and then I'm gonna give you a tip that you can make any movement into a cardio exercise. So my first favorite exercise, sitting at the edge of a chair, up nice and tall, core muscles engaged, hands closed. So you're not making fists, just close your hands and swing your arms. This is one of my favorites. And you can move a little bit faster than what you normally would move, but this is a great way to get your heart rate up. And you can do this for about 30 seconds to a minute. And you can take breaks if you need, but the goal is to get your heart rate up. The second exercise I like to do is forward punches. So you stay in the same spot, up nice and tall, abdominal muscles engaged, hands closed, but you're punching forward at shoulder height. And again, you can increase the pace a little bit. There's lots of ways to increase the challenge of it if you wanted to hold a one pound weight in each hand or you can go faster. So forward punches. Another variation of this is rotation punches. So you're just slightly rotating your core muscles as you keep moving. And again, you would do this for about 30 seconds to a minute, or if you're pretty advanced, you could even do about two or three minutes of each of these movements. My third favorite exercise is overhead jumping jacks. This is a real burner. It gets your heart rate up and works your shoulder muscles. 
So we're going to use just our upper body, core is still engaged, up tall, and we're just going to do the arm part of a jumping jack. Now, if you have any shoulder limitations or pain, you don't have to come up this high. You can come up this high or even lower. If you can go a little bit faster if you're not going as high, but up and down, up and down. This is a lot of movement. It requires a lot of muscles to engage, which is why I like to include this as a cardio movement. There's three principles that I like to use anytime I'm doing an exercise with the goal of increasing my heart rate. First, you have to pick a movement. So for this example, I'm gonna go with my first choice that I selected for you guys, which was this arm swing. So there's three principles you can do to make any exercise a cardio-based exercise. So option number one is go faster. Go faster than what feels normal for you. And it can be really fast, or it can just be a little bit faster, but go faster. If you increase the speed, it increases the challenge and therefore it will increase your heart rate. The second thing that you can do with the same movement, instead of going faster, you can add more motion. So really lift as high as you can. You want this front arm coming up as high as you can and this back arm going back as high as you can, still keeping good posture, still engaging your core muscles, but move more, get as much movement. That requires more muscles and therefore more cardio effort. And the third way is to add more power behind each movement. So for this exercise, you would add power to punch up towards the ceiling, almost like a boxing movement, maybe like an uppercut kind of. So you add that power to punch up with every movement. More power requires more strength and more muscles and therefore more increase in your aerobic endurance. As I mentioned in the beginning, we don't know from research yet how long we should be doing cardio exercise for. Therefore, at this time, I am telling my clients to perform cardio or aerobic exercise for about three to five minutes at whatever intensity level you can accomplish without feeling too fatigued to then do your exercises. If you do need to take a break between your cardio and your strengthening exercises, that's okay, but try to make your break less than 20 minutes long. We really want those exercises to be pretty close to the cardio in order to reap the benefits for neuroplasticity. I hope you found these tips helpful. To find more tips from me, you can find me on Instagram or on my website, missinglink.com, spelled M-S-I-N-G link.com. Or you can work with me directly in my online MS wellness program, The Missing Link.